Hello friends, welcome to Java EE servlet tutorial. Now we are uh, going to look at the example that we are going to create. First, let us uh, quickly review what we discussed in uh, part 1. Then we will move to this uh, part 2 of this uh, concept video. Here we are going to discuss uh, about the concept with uh, the example that we are going to create in the next video. So let's review the part one first. So in the part one we discussed about the request dispatcher and how we can get the request dispatcher using the get request dispatch method of the request object. Then we can make a call to forward or include. Next, we discussed about the forward. The browsing user will send request to some servlet and that servlet can forward the request to some other servlet. In the picture, you are seeing it as servlet 1 and 2. Then this forward is uh, actually transfers the ownership from owner 1 to owner 2. That also we discussed in the previous part. Also, we discussed when it is transferring the ownership, it can modify the request object. So we talked about setting the attribute and servlet 2 after the ownership transfer uh, can get the attribute and perform the request processing. Since the ownership is transferred to owner 2, owner 2 is responsible for sending the response to browsing user. So that we discussed in the previous video. Next, we talked about the include and when we are talking about the include in the previous video, we discussed that um, request object goes to owner 1, that means servlet 1. Servlet 1 can include other web resources like HTML, JSP or servlet 2. But here the ownership will not be transferred to servlet since uh, it is just including the content of the HTML and servlet content of the HTML is static so whatever is there in the HTML that will directly attach it to the response of the owner one servlet. But in servlet 2 the content may be generated dynamically using the print writer so the dynamic output is also attached to the uh, owner one response. So uh, then owner one is responsible to send the response. So here ownership is not transferred, it just includes the output of the static as well as the dynamic content. If it is a servlet or a JSP, it's a dynamic content that we discussed in the previous uh, video. Now, uh, to understand these two concepts, uh, forward and include, let us create an example. And in this video, we will discuss about the example that we are going to create. Now we are moving to part 2 content. Let's say we have a web browser and uh, uh, the end user is uh, sending a request to get the HTML page. So this will be a get request. Once the user browses to this login.html, they will get the response back. So this login.html will be available in the web server once they place the request to once they place the request to get this login.html, server will send that information back to the web browser. So that one will be our response one. So let us see this login.html will have username and password. User will click the submit button to send username and password. So once the end user gets the logins form, they will fill the username and password, then they will perform the submit operation. Now request goes to 
one more resource in the web server. Let's say the request is processed by login servlet. When request initially arrives, login servlet is the owner for processing the request and sending the response back to the user. So in our example from login servlet, we will modify the incoming request and we will add an attribute to state the authentication is passed or failed. Then we will forward this request to one more servlet. So once the request is forwarded to another servlet, login resp2, the ownership is transferred from owner1 to owner2. Now the new owner is owner2. So owner2 is now responsible to process the request and send the response back to the end user. So it's a ownership transfer. That's what you are seeing. But if you see here login servlet, which already validated the user and Pass or file is set as a attribute. Here we are talking about the request attribute. So we already saw how to set attribute and get attribute in servlet context as well as a HTTP session in a previous video. Now we are setting the attributes in request object. So once a response is sent to the web browser, the request attribute will get destroyed from server side. So we are still in the request processing mode only. So here we added parser file. Now servlet response knows uh, will make use of this attribute and it uh, then sends a response. So if it sees pass, it directly forms the output and send the response. So let's say that response to a is for pass. So it says you are authenticated. So if it is fail, what happens? It generates output stating that authentication failed. It is generated by login servlet itself. So let us say to a then it includes the static content of the login.html so here we are making call to include i is not caps and in case of include if you see ownership is not transferred this is a, this is a static content you can even include the output of some other servlet in our example, we are not going to deal this just for explanation purpose. I'm just keeping one more servlet exp. And if you include exp, the output generated by this exp is included as part of uh, this response. You can include n number of uh, web resources as part of the output. So the servlet will give the output to the login to servlet and ownership is not ownership will not be transferred to this servlet in case of include we are just including their output that's all so now if login is failed the output generated by login risk plus the content of login.html both will be sent back to the browser. So this will be our second alternative to the response. So when uh, the login fails, the login response servlet will tell that invalid, I mean, when it is passed, sorry, this one is failed. 
when it is passed it just tells that login success but when it is failed it tells login failed also it attaches the output of login.html using the include method of a request dispatcher so end user will see the message login failed and they will get one more chance to login because we know what is the content of this uh, login.html it will have username password then uh, a submit button so in case of login failure they will once again get the login form they can re-enter their username and password then they can click submit so when they click submit then it will be one more request request 3 so request 3 doesn't know about a request 3 object so request 2 and request 3 both are different so it goes through the same uh, uh, request response process cycling when it comes here previously let us say the user provided a wrong password they saw a login html and this time let us assume they give right password so when we come here the attribute will say it pass so this attribute is attached to request 3 so you no need to confuse that um, it will previously it was false now we are overriding and setting uh, uh, i mean previously it was false now we are overriding and setting uh, true that means pass it's all together a different request object so you are setting an attribute here stating pass or fail all right now we will go ahead and create the example if you see here here are the moving parts first we will create login.html then we will create this login servlet which will process the request so you will see that then we will see how it is validating and attaching the attribute to the request so in the next video when you see demo the demo will go in this order first we will create login html then you will see how we are creating the login s servlet which process the username password authentication stuff then you will also see how this login s is attaching uh, an attribute to the request processor and you will also so after that you will see how we forward the request to the login resp in login resp you will see how it is reading the attribute then it generates that means here we will create login resp servlet this is why then you will see how we are reading this attribute okay then you will see how we generate response for uh, pass login pass then we will see how we include the static content of login html along with the along with the output generated by this uh, login resp that's all Thank you for watching. Bye.